The second study is titled Determinants of Household Out-of-Pocket Expenditure on Non-Communicable Diseases. It is also authored by Dr. Ulep, together with PIDS consultant Ms. Lovely Antoline. The work focuses on the financial burden of non-communicable diseases and highlights and highlights the dual impact of NCDs on the health and economic well-being of Filipinos. Exploring factors affecting out-of-pocket health expenditure on NCDs, the authors suggest that improved insurance coverage and more accessible healthcare services could help alleviate the burden of healthcare costs related to non-communicable diseases. We are very glad this morning to have with us Ms. Lovely Antoline, one of the authors of the study, to discuss their findings and recommendations. So Ms. Toline is currently a consultant at the Asian Development Bank. She holds an MA degree in public policy from the National University of Singapore. She previously worked at PIDS as a research specialist. I think right now she is in Greece, so quite early there. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Lovely. You may take the virtual floor. Uh, thanks, Sir Sunny, for the kind introduction, and good morning, everyone. So as already mentioned earlier, I'll be presenting the second part of the uh, three-part study. And this uh, my presentation will be discussing the determinants of household out-of-pocket expenditure on non-communicable diseases. So similar to the first study, it also exploits data from the 2018 National Health Expenditure Survey. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so before I proceed with the rest of my presentation, let me just give you a brief um, uh, walkthrough of what I'll discuss today. So first, I'm going to provide a brief introduction on non-communicable -commun diseases in the global and local context, as well as why it is an important area for policy. Second, I will discuss the empirical strategy conducted in this study, which is the two-part model. Um, third, I will briefly provide a description of the data set that was used, uh, which is the 2018 National Health Expenditure Survey, or NHES in short. Uh, fourth, I will highlight the key results from the econometric analysis. And finally, in the conclusion part, I will discuss the policy implications or recommendations, some study limitations, and provide some suggestions for future research. So let's get started. Um, next slide, please. So as uh, maybe a lot of us know, uh, non-communicable diseases or NCDs in short refer to a group of conditions that are not mainly caused by an acute infection, result in long-term health consequences, and often create a need for a long-term treatment and care. In 2015, this group of diseases have increasingly taken a larger share of global mortality, therefore surpassing infectious diseases. So recent data from 2019 shows that NCDs are the leading cause of mortality, being responsible for 71% of all deaths worldwide, worldwide, or basically around 41 million people per year. The Philippines is no exception, with 7 out of 10 deaths and liabilities classified as NCDs, as exemplified in the chart that you can see in your screen right now. So NCDs such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes have climbed in terms of their ranking in the top causes of disability and death from 2019, uh, 1990 to 2019. So next slide, please. So the adverse impacts of NCDs extends not only on health, but also on economic well-being. So at the household level, NCDs incurs large finance, financial burden due to direct medical and non-medical costs, coupled with indirect costs from loss of income for patients and caregiver, caregivers. On an aggregate scale, estimates from the Philippine Statistics Authority show that NCDs accounted for 30% of total health expenditures in 2019, as you can see from the figure on the left. This is, this is a particular concern given that household out-of-pocket expenditures will constitute to almost half of total health expenditures owing to the lengthy and expensive treatment processes for NCDs, uh, which you can see for from the right figure. 
within NCDs, um, cardiovascular diseases and cancer are among those which incur the highest total health expenditures based on the average from 2014 to 2019. So next slide, please. So just to provide like a solid aim for the study or like a research objectives. Um, health systems must ensure that people are protected from the financial consequences of receiving medical care. One of the objectives of the Universal Healthcare Law of 2019 is to provide a comprehensive set of cost-effective and preventive health services without causing financial hardship, prioritizing the needs of those who are unable to afford such services. To fulfill this objective, a systematic assessment of health expenditures by type of diseases would rather be important. This will ensure that specific, well-targeted, and sustainable strategies are implemented under the UHC law. So basically, the overall objective of the study was to identify whether and to what extent socioeconomic, uh, demographic, and clinical factors of the population had an impact on out-of-pocket expenditures among Filipinos with um, non-communicable diseases. So for the rest of the presentation, I'll refer to out-of-pocket expenditures to OOPs. So just, uh, sorry, can you go back to the previous slide? Yes. So there are three core um, objectives that we I'd like to highlight. First is to examine the incidence of NCDs among households and their main sources of healthcare financing. Second is to measure the incidence of catastrophic health expenditures in um, NCDs. And third is to model health expenditure and NCDs as a function of um, different factors, as I've mentioned earlier. So for, um, for the sake of this presentation, I'll focus on objectives two and three. Next slide, please. So before I move on with the model, let me provide just a quick um, background on the data set that was used. Um, so as mentioned earlier, uh, we used the 2018 National Health Expenditure Survey. So it's basically a household and health provided based data collection mechanism to gather detailed health information. Uh, and it has two components. One is the household component and the other is the medical provider component. So for this study, um, the main data set that we use is the household component. Um, and this household component is consists of um, several sub-modules. Um, and for, uh, for this analysis, the sub-modules that we mainly use are the uh, outpatient and inpatient care utilization and charge payment uh, modules. And the unit of analysis is at the individual level. So we identified NCDs uh, using the international classification using a variable on the international classification of um, uh, diseases or ICD-10. And in the study, uh, just to reiterate, we mainly focus on out-of-pocket spending, which uh, pertains to direct outlays uh, among those among those individuals identified with NCDs. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, so let's move on with the estimation strategy that we used. So uh, modeling healthcare expenditure is not straightforward due to uh, its data characteristics. As such, um, usually health expenditure data is often described to have described to have a significant proportion of zero cost observations and having a heavily right skewed distribution for positive costs uh, with a relatively small proportion of patients incurring very high expenses. And this is true in the case of out-of-pocket spending, uh, which is observed in the NHES data. A sample of the illustration is provided here in the screen for uh, the outpatient care side. Um, so when basically when you take the log of spending, um, it improves the distribution um, and um, it, uh, once you uh, imp uh, impose the log, uh, the logarithm of the OOP spending, it starts to follow a normal distribution and resolves the skewness of the data. So with this type of data estimation through the usual regression, um, regression usual ordinary least squares regression is actually uh, deemed um, biased. Method 
methodical uh, developments have been made through the years in handling this type of data, and therefore uh, alternatives to the ordinary least squares regression, which is usually commonly used, has emerged. Among the popular estimation methodologies used is the two-part model. So next slide, please. Um, so in the two-part model, the zero values are, are handled by first modeling for the probability that there are any costs, and second, through a conditional regression model for positive costs. So basically, this model accounts for the fact that the excessive uh, zero observations may be generated by a mechanism different from that of positive expenditures or having non-zero expenditures. So compared to just single equation models or OLS regression models, two-part models are actually better at handling um, the differences or heterogeneity be between those who spend and do not spend, uh, as well as the differences based on the level of spending. So in the analysis, the first part employs a logit model, while the second, um, the second part utilizes a generalized uh, linear model. So in this um, equation or this model that we are using, uh, the dependent variable uh, represents the out-of-pocket health expenditures among individuals with non-communicable diseases. And we use uh, a set of variables on the right-hand side or in the independent variables to examine which uh, factors or um, which um, determinants are actually important in, in terms of like determining uh, out of pocket expenditures. Um, so next slide, please. And just to provide a summary of the data, um, uh, just to provide a description of or descriptive statistics of the data that we're using. So basically, the table in the screen presents the summary statistics of the main variables that were used in the analysis. So as you can see, utilization of outpatient and in Patient uh, services tend to vary by the type of location. For outpatient care, individuals with outpatient care visits in the urban areas tend to be higher than those in um, rural areas. The opposite is true for inpatient services. So for both outpatient and inpatient services, more than half of the individuals are covered by field health at least, while a very small fraction is covered by other types of health insurance. Public uh, hospitals tend to be utilized the most for both inpatient and outpatient services, followed by private hospitals. And I can see some proportional differences in other variables such as age, sex, and educational um, attend, uh, attainment, although this tend to be quite minimal. Next slide, please. Uh, just to uh, provide uh, just a quick uh, look at the breakdown of health expenditures based on the NHES. Um, as you can see, expenditure in outpatient and inpatient utilization by service type shows that majority of spending among individuals with NCDs are on medicines, followed by professional care. <clears throat> Most of expenditure are financed from households own resources, savings, and income, both for outpatient and inpatient services. Next slide, please. So let's move on to the results of the model. So basically, as mentioned earlier, um, the first part of the model explains the probability of having out-of-pocket spending versus not having one. Uh, and this is uh, basically presented in this um, uh, table using log odds unit. So for outpatient, uh, outpatient out-of-pocket spending, only expenditure quintile and health facility type were found to be statistically significant. Uh, the uh, expenditure quintile variable is associated with an increased likelihood of having out-of-patient, out-of-pocket spending by 68% when the individual belongs to quintile 5 um, relative to quintile 1. Uh, meanwhile, the type of health facility tends to affect the likelihood of having out of pocket out of pocket spending by 2.8 times for private hospital relative to um, barangay health units. So uh, for inpatient uh, out of pocket spending, only several categories within a few uh, variables were found to be significant. Age tends to marginally decrease the probability of having incurred 
inpatient uh, OOP spending by 1%. Interestingly, interestingly private HMO, uh, uh, private insurance coverage um, tends to increase the probability of having incurred any uh, inpatient out-of-pocket spending by almost 1.9 times relative to having no insurance at all. Uh, and lastly, having two or more comorbidities also increases the probability of spending by 1.6 times relative to having no comorbidity. Next slide, please. Uh, so basically, this uh, plot uh, shows just a visual presentation of um, the coefficients that were extracted on the second part of the model. So the second part of the model indicates the increase or increase or decrease in out-of-pocket spending, uh, conditional that um, the individual has any expenditure at all. For out of uh, for outpatient, out-of-pocket spending, your numerous variables were found to be statistically significant. Uh, say, for example, travel time to the health facility is, considered, uh, is found to be highly significant, and it tends to increase out-of-pocket spending for NCDs by 17%. Uh, the presence of uh, one comorbidity also leads to an increase, tends to be associated to an increase in expenditure by almost 28% uh, relative to having no co comorbidity. So for inpatient out-of-pocket uh, OOP spending, being female tends to decrease spending by 36%, albeit the significance level is quite low. Um, similarly, belonging to quintile, um, quintile file 5, or the richest quintile um, also increases spending substantially as compared to quintile one. Uh, the presence of one comorbidity is associated with a decrease in spending while having two or more comorbidities or diseases leads to higher spending relative to having no comorbidities. Uh, interestingly, it was found that insurance coverage at any type is not significantly, uh, uh, not statistically significant. Next slide, please. Uh, another noteworthy result is probably the high uh, is that uh, that is the highly significant relationship between out of pocket spending on NCDs and the type of uh, healthcare facility utilized. So unsurprisingly, private hospitals and clinics incur significantly higher costs than other health facilities. This may be problematic as a high proportion of the population are still reliant on these private facilities. Uh, to, ameliorate, to ameliorate the exorbitant costs, especially for inpatient services, early detection um, by preventive screenings and early treatment initiation would probably help in decreasing disease progression and thus reduce preventable um, hospitalizations. Improving the current state of primary healthcare in the Philippines could also aid in this matter. Um, finally, local government units could also um, increase uh, reach by con contracting out some services to private providers. Next slide, please. Uh, now let's delve on the results in insurance. Uh, based on the analysis, PhilHealth, um, PhilHealth was alone does not seem to be statistic to st statistically decrease out of pocket um, spending on NCDs, and there may be several possible explanations for this. On the one hand, it may be that the benefit package offered or support value for NCDs were inadequate, which uh, which may imply that the insurance um, was not enough to ensure financial protection. On the other, this result could also indicate a shift in the demand curve when people say, for example, had access to field health, cost of services went down and so their demand for these services could have also increased. Finally, the findings of the study also suggest that accessibility to health facility matters, at least for out of uh, out, outpatient uh, OOP spending. Uh, this may suggest a need to provide additional services to NCD patients who live farther from the healthcare units, especially those in the rural areas. Telemedicine may be a potential venue for increasing accessibility as well. So before I proceed to the conclusion, let's probably go over quickly to some of the calculations we made on catastrophic health expenditures. So next slide, please. So this uh, Kazakhstan Catastrophic health expenditures refer, refers to any expenditure for medical treatment that can pose as a threat 
uh, towards the household's financial ability to maintain its basic needs. Uh, so using the NHS data set, catastrophic health expenditure on NCDs in the studies measured uh, following the definition provided by the World Health Organization. As such, health expenditures is considered catastrophic if the household's out of pocket payment for healthcare exceeds 40% of the household's capacity to pay. So uh, note that the calculation is based on the total medical expenditure of a household wherein at least one member is identified to have NCDs. So as what you can see from the chart, the relationship uh, between catastrophic payments among households with NCDs and their socioeconomic status does not seem to be um, straightforward. Has households in quintile two and quintile three have a lower proportion of ha households which incurred catastrophic payments relative to quintile one, which may somehow suggest the regressive nature of NCDs where the poor suffer disproportionately. In comparison with households with at least um, uh, a member, one member with a communi communicable disease, incidence of catastrophic um, spending among those with NCDs tend to be higher or more uh, regressive. So next slide, please. Uh, just to conclude, um, findings from this exercise allows for an enlarged scope of discussion and the determinants of out-of-pocket spending, albeit at a more um, granular level. The findings of the study suggest that the type of health facility and health insurance, as well as the travel time matters in out-of-pocket spending on NCDs. Uh, supplementary increase in insurance coverage, improve healthcare services, and greater accessibility to these services could aid in reducing the burden of healthcare costs of non-communicable diseases among Filipinos. Uh, note, however, that this study is also um, uh, has also some methodological limitations. Um, first, the study only utilizes the national household, uh, the NHS uh, household component, which is, which is actually based on self-reported data. As such, the OOP expenditure on NCDs might be underestimated due to some recall bias. Second, the analysis is grounded on a cross-sectional type of data. In the future, the extended series of the NHS could therefore be exploited to establish causal inference through some quasi-experimental um, techniques or other techniques that uh, may prove the reliability of the results. Uh, the same model from this analysis could also be, uh, could be applied to identify um, the determinants and expenditure on communicable diseases and consequently compare it with the findings from this study. Concurrently, since the two-part uh, model does not actively identify whether the increase or decrease in the probability of healthcare spending is due to accessibility or immoral hazard, other measures, methods that could explore or control for this condition could be explored also in the future. Uh, and with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lovely. That was uh, quite enlightening.